Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego with my beautiful wife, Karina, from beautiful Venezuela. And we went through the K-1 visa process just like you guys are going through the K-1 visa process. Karina is from Venezuela. She relocated to Bogota, Colombia for almost six years. We dated for a long time. And then we got married on January 14th, 2024 on the beach here in Florida. And so we understand that this is a stressful time for you guys who are going through the K-1 visa process, who have started the K-1 visa process. You haven't mailed your K-1 visa package yet. And you wanna know what's going on, what's the process? This video is about questions that you could possibly be asked at your embassy interview. Okay, now remember the State Department control this process. So the questions are gonna be basically the same all around the world. Whatever country it is you live in, whether it's in India, Philippines, England, Australia, Colombia, doesn't matter, okay? The questions are basically gonna be the same at the scary <laughs> visa interview. So come on along and let's go over these. This is a list of all the possible questions you could possibly be asked. They're not gonna ask you all these questions, but these are a selection of what you possibly could be asked at the scary visa interview. Okay, so come on, let's go. So you're at the scary visa interview, let's say in Bogota, Colombia, or let's say in the consulate in Mumbai, India, or let's say in Manila, Philippines, you're in the scary visa interview. What are the questions you could be asked? Well, they could ask you, what is your country of nationality? Well, Karina's from Venezuela. See, they asked her that question. She said, I'm Venezuelan. Okay, that was a question. They, they could ask you, what type of work do you do? Okay, well, Karina's the manager of she was the manager of the ice cream stores in Bogota. So she was a manager. And in, and in Venezuela, she was the director of accounting for a big company. Okay? So she's an accountant. Uh, they, uh, they could ask you, have you ever received a K-1 visa before in the past? Miss, that's for you, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary. And if you did, why did you get one? What was, what was you know, what happened? Okay, that could be a question. And these are... Uh, Basically, questions about you, Mr. Beneficiary, or Miss Beneficiary. They might ask you, have you ever been arrested before? Have you been arrested by the Colombian police, or the Australian police, or the British police? And they might ask you, have you ever been married before? Okay. Other possible questions they could ask you, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, is have you ever been to the United States before? Have you ever been to America before? Um, they're trying to find out if you've ever been denied a visa in the past. Now, if you've been denied a B2 tourist visa in the past, okay, try to relax on that because it's got nothing to do with a K-1 visa. What they're looking for is, did you come to the United States on a B2 tourist visa and overstay? Those are the questions. They're trying to look for immigration errors in the past, but being denied a B2 tourist visa is common occurrence. So relax on that, okay? Um, they're basically what they're looking for is if you've ever used a K-1 visa for fraudulent purposes in the past, all right? Hola. So if you've ever been denied a B2 tourist visa in the past, don't worry about it, okay? It's not a fraud. They're looking for fraud. They're looking for, have you ever tried to defraud somebody into getting a green card? Have you ever tried to get a K-1 visa fraudulently? If you were denied a B-2 tourist visa, relax. When you fill out the DS-160, you're gonna say, yeah, I was denied a B-2 tourist visa. Immigration will not worry, I'm not gonna block your K-1 because of that, okay? Now, they're gonna ask questions about uh, your fiance, okay? They're gonna ask questions about me, the, the sponsor. You know, they could ask, how old am I? What's my age, okay? Where do I live? Where, are you, where is Karina gonna live when she gets to the United States of America? Um, have I been married before? Well, I got a divorce under my belt. So they, you know, they asked Karina that. Did you know that Diego was married before and he had a divorce? She goes, yeah, here's his divorce decree. Here you go, happy, happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas. Um, they might ask uh, you, what is, what is the most favorite thing that you like about your American citizen sponsor? What's the most favorite thing you like about him? Well, Karina likes everything Yay! about me. So, th you know, that, that's kind of a hard question to answer. But, you know, that's a question you could possibly get at a K-1 visa interview. Mm -hmm. 
They want the immigration. The, the consul officer is trying to find out if you know your sponsor well. Do you know your American citizen sponsor well? I mean, you've been together a long time. You're dating each other. You're going to get married, right? You've had an engagement, right? So obviously, uh, you should be able to answer these questions very easily. So the consular officer at the embassy, whether it's in Bogota, Colombia, or London, England, they're trying to determine, you know, is, uh, if you're able to marry each other. Are you both legally able to marry each other? Which is why some embassies are required that you fill out a second letter of intent to get married and you sign a date, you know, a couple of weeks before your visa interview. You write a letter of intent to get married. You state, the American citizen will state that I'm legally free and able to marry. Um, that means that you, that you are either divorced or you're a widow or you're single or you have an annulment. Okay. And then that's why, that's the reason for the second letter of intent to get married very close to the visa interview. Uh, other questions they might ask at the visa interview. How did you both meet? Where did you meet each other? How did you get into your relationship? You know, um, they might say, what do you do together? What do you like to do together when you hang out? Well, Karina and I, we love going to museums. We love history. When we were in Bogota, Colombia, in Colombia, in, when we were in Colombia, we went to probably every single museum that we could possibly find. We went to the museum, the, 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 the museum of... Uh, of Antonio Narino, the, one of the founders of Colombia in, in uh, Villa de Leyva. We went to the National Museum of Colombia, the biggest museum in Colombia, in Bogota, where they have the pen where they signed the Declaration of, of Independence for Colombia. When the, and it was signed July 4th, 1991. So we love history, okay? And then they might ask you, what was the marriage proposal like? When your sponsor proposed to you, what was it like? Where were you? What, where were you, what was the location? Um, let me see here. Have you planned a wedding? Now, you guys are going to get married. You guys are engaged to each other, right? You have wedding plans, and you can prove it. What if the consular officer asks you, do you have wedding plans? And you say, yeah, i got wedding plans. And, you're, and the consular officer is going to say, okay, show me. Show me your wedding plans. Well, I've made videos on how to create evidence for wedding plans for evidence for a consular interview. Hello, everybody. So the, the consular officer is trying to determine whether you guys are in a real relationship and if you submit a strong K-1 visa package at the outset with tons and tons of evidence, with lots of trips to see each other, with lots of time together, with all the receipts from the hotels and the vacations. I mean, Karina and I, we went all over the place on my first trip. My first trip to Colombia was supposed to be for two weeks for a vacation to be with to meet Karina. I stayed for five weeks. And then Karina said, I don't I can't stand being away from you. So I came back to Colombia and stayed with her for five months. And then I had to come back to the States and take care of business here. And then I went back to Colombia and stayed with her for 11 months. So, you know, we have all this evidence. We had all this evidence of our strong relationship. We, we, we both like the same things. We're both compatible. We, lo in the, we love to go to museums. We love history. Uh, we love cooking. And we love free market capitalism. We're both conservative Catholics. So we, we, we connected like, I mean, it was a fantastic connection. And the consul officer could see that at the visa interview in Bogota, Colombia. So long as your relationship is real, so long as you go to the visa interview relaxed, dress business casual, dress, dress in business casual, don't wear jeans and a t-shirt and sloppy clothes to a K-1 visa interview. This is a job interview. You're get, you're, you're, just pretend you're going to a job interview to get hired to be the president of a company. Okay? That's the way you got to look at this. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I do a live stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 6 p.m. Central Time, U.S. I give you all this free information, all this free advice. I've got nine years experience going through the K-1 visa process. Um, it didn't take me nine years, but I've been through it once before, which didn't work out, which is good for me because now I got beautiful Karina for the rest of my life right here, my beautiful wife. Stay relaxed, 
Join us at the live stream. Remember, I'm not an immigration attorney. I don't give you any legal advice, zero legal advice. I'm not a hubagato, okay? I'm a real estate agent, but I can write the book on K-1 visas, spousal visas, green card applications, tourist visas. I can write the book on how to do it from my experience. See you at the live stream and be patient during this process. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'll talk to you later. See you later, bye. I'll be back.